Hey, you have come back to Lily's Viking Adventure. Thank you. Or if you're new, subscribe. Do all the things like um, knock the like button unconscious. Just knock it unconscious. So today, this is one that I've been wanting to do, uh, Grimness Mall. I'm going to do a short intro at the beginning, and then I will read the poem in its entirety. So let's get started. Grimnismal, Sayings of Grimnir. Grimnismal is from the ancient poetic Edda. The structure of the poem is a longer narrative introduction that sets up the verses of the poem for the uninitiated. In the poem, Odin, in the guise of Grimnir, travels to visit a king named, named Gerard, Gerod after a foolish wager with his wife Frigga. Not one to happily lose, Frigga intercedes and gets a warning through to Gerod. Not realizing what he is getting involved in, he is on the lookout for strangers. When Odin turns up as the mysterious Grimnir, he is soon strung up and tortured. In a society that prided, pr prided itself on hospitality towards guests, turning to violence was still never far away. Structure and background. Grimnismal. The Grimnismal is intact in both the Codus Regis and the Arnamengian Codex, and it is quoted extensively by Snorri. With the two sources and all the quotes, the poem is well understood. This is in contrast to a few of the other poetic Edda poems, where some are partially damaged and some stanzas might be missing in one or both of, uh, of the source codexes. Much like the Vathruthnismal that precedes it, the Grimnismal is rather encyclopedic and contains a vast host of information, especially many gods and other beings are named, providing Snorri and us with deep insight into all the dwarves and elves, among others. Another poem that basically lists or actually alludes to a number of mythological events is the Locusena. In it, Loki insults all the gods in order and refers to a number of things that had happened. Many of those references are otherwise unknown for us today, so somehow lost along the way. One that springs to mind right away is uh, where he alludes to a story where Odin had oath to him never to drink without him. And uh, we don't know where that story is, so... Hopefully we will find it one day. We're finding so many things. This version is based on an older English translation that has been adapted slightly for a modern day reader. Most, if not all, of the old English words and phrases are changed, as well as updating some sentence structures. When unsure of a particular meaning or spelling, I have consulted a more modern translation in Norwegian. Grimnismal. King Hrothung had two sons. One was named Agnar, and the other was named Girod. Agnar was ten winters, and Girod was eight winters. One time the pair went out in a rowboat trolling for small fish. Grimnar, Grimnir and Agnar. Uh, and this translation is from George Wright. 1872 to 1951, it's public domain and via Wikimedia Commons. Then the wind pushed them out to sea in the darkness of night. They wrecked the boat on shore and getting up on land, they met a peasant. They stayed with the peasants through winter. The woman fostered Agnar and the man looked after Girod. He gave him good advice. When spring came, the peasant gave them a boat, but when the old woman led them to the beach, the man spoke to Gerard. 
they had a good wind and made it to their father's dock. Geroder was in the bow of the boat. He leapt ashore and pushed the boat back out, saying, Go now, there are no winds for you, and the boat drifted back out to sea. Gerard, on the other hand, went up to the village, and the young boy was received well. His father, however, was dying. Then Gerard became king and was known as a good man. Odin and Frigga watch from Hilskerolf. Odin and Frigga sat in Hilskerolf and looked out over the nine worlds. Looking over Midgard, Odin said, Do you see your foster son, Agnar, how he lives in a cave having children with Jotun? But Girad, my foster child, is a king and the ruler of his land. Frigga replied, He is so greedy with food and that he torments his guests if too many of them show up. Odin then said, but this was a great lie, and they agreed to make a bet on it. Frigga sent her chambermaid, Fulla, with a message to Girod. She asked the king to be careful not to harm the man who had come to their land, saying that no dog was so fierce it would charge him. Now it was a great lie that King Girod was not hospitable, but he still asked his men to arrest the man that no dogs were fierce enough to attack. He was wearing a blue hooded coat and called himself Grimnir, and would not say anything more about himself, even though he was questioned. The king had him tortured almost to death and placed between two fires, and there he sat for eight nights. King Girod had a son ten winters old. He was named Agnar after his brother. Agnar went to Grimnir and gave him a full horn of drink, and he said that his father was ill-behaved having him tortured without cause. Grimnar drank from the horn, and then the fire got so bad that Grimnir's fur burned off. He spoke. You are hot fire and too fierce by far. Be gone now, you flames. The coat is burnt, even though I lift it and the fire scorches the fur. Eight night I sat between the fires. Not one man offered me food, except for Agnar, and he will rule, son of Girod, the land of the Goths. Bless you, Agnar, for blessed you are. As I am Veratir, for only one drink, you will never receive greater reward. Holy is the land that I see near the gods and elves. However, through time, Thor will live until the gods meet their end. Yalir is it called, the place where Ullr have raised his halls. Afalhimir Freyr received from the gods in ancient times as a teething gift. There is a third home where gentle gods roofed the hall with silver. Vaskjalf, it is called, built in ancient times, built by a god for himself. The fourth is Skovebekjer, with its cooling waves. There Odin and Saga drink every day happily from gold cups. The fifth is Gladshimir, there, shining in gold, stands Valhalla in all its might. And there, Hrofter collects each day, the Ienar among the slain. It is easy to recognize, for he who to Odin comes and sees the hall. The rafters are spears, roofed with shields, benches covered with chainmail. It is easy to recognize, for he who to Odin comes and sees the hall. A wolf hangs west of the door, an eagle soars above. The sixth is Tre Tremheim, where Thiasi lived. That all mighty Jotun, there Skadi lives now, that bright God's bride, in her father's former home. The seventh is Breidablik, 
There Balder has raised his halls, in that land that is so fine, no evil is ever plotted. The eighth is Himinbjörg, and there Heimdallr chose to live. The gods' guardian drink in his great hall happily, happily the wonderful mead. The ninth is Folkvinger, there Freya rules. Over who shall have a seat in the hall? Hall of the slain she choose each day, the other half is Odin's. The tenth is Glitnir, with pillars of gold and a silver roof, there Forseti lives, most of his days solving all matters. The eleventh is Noatun, and there Njord raised his halls. Ruler of men, free from vice, sits there in his high-timbered hall, overgrown with bush and tall grass, is Vidar's land, Viti. There will the sun leap from his horse, eager to avenge his slain father. In Eldramir, Andramir cooks, Sagramir's sizzling flesh, the best of food, but few men will know what the Ienar feasts on. Freki and Jerry, Odin feeds the warrior god of ancient times, but on wine alone does he glorious in arms, Odin live forever. Hugin and Munin each day fly over the earth. I fear for Hugin that he will be lost, but I fear more for Munin. Thundroar's loud, and Thjotvitnir's fish happily swims the wild river. It seems impossible to the Ienar to wade the wild torrent. There stands Valgrind, the sacred gate, behind it the holy doors, the ancient gate. Few are they who can tell how it is locked. Five hundred doors and forty more. I believe there is in Valhall. Eight hundred Ienar pass through one door. When they go to battle, the wolf. Five hundred rooms and forty more. I believe there is in Blixkernir. Of all the halls whose roofs I've seen, my son is surely the greatest. The goat Hydran stands by Odin's hall, feeding on the branches of Leoradir filling large pitchers with the best mead, a never-ending flow. The stag Ekthyrnir stands by Odin's hall, feeding on the branches of Leodrather. From his horns drips into Hevirgirnl Mer, Hevirgirnl Mer, flowing into all rivers. Sid and Vid, Saken and Aiken, Svol and Gunthro, Fjorm and Fimbothol. Gipul and Gopul, Gomul and Givirmul, they flow through the realms of gods. Thin and Vin, Thol and Hol, Grad and Gantoran. Then is one named Vegisven another. A third is Theodenuma, Nit and Not, Non and Hron, Slid and Hrid, Silg and Yilg. Vid and Van, Bond and Strand, Gjol and Lipt, they flow close to men and fall down to hell after. Kormt and Ormt, the two hot springs Thor wades through each day as he judges fairly by the ash Yildjarsal. Or else the god's bridge burns in flames and the flowing water boils. Glad and Gilar, Galer and Skibramir, Silfrentop and Sinir, Gisil and Falhafnir, Bultop and Letfeti. On these horses, the Asir ride every day when they go to judge by the ash Yildrasil. Three roots branch three ways underneath the ash Yildrasil. Hell lives under the first, frost giants under the second, humans under the third. A squirrel named Ratatosk runs there. By the ash he'll drassel. the eagle words he often bears to Nidhagr below. 
There are four stags nibbling the buds, with their necks bent, Dan, Devalen, Dunier, and Dirathur. More serpents lie under the ash than a fool could imagine, Gon and Mon, sons of Graft Dithnir, Grabak and Grabolud, Ofnir and Svafnir, I reckon will always gnaw the roots of that tree. The ash you'll dressle suffers greatly, far more than men know. The stag nibble its top, its trunk rots, the nidogger gnaws below. Press the mist they want bringing me the horn. Siegold and Skogel, Hild and Thrud, Hulk and Hroftjör, Gol and Geronlu, Rangred and Ragred, Regenleaf, bring the Ionyara beer, Arvak and Alsvid will for all time wearily draw the sun. But under them the caring gods place two bellows with cool air. Svalen is he who stands in front of the sun, shielding the shining god. Mountains and the sea, I reckon, would burn. Should it fall from the sun? Skull is the wolf who pursues the shining god. To the protective woods, another is Hati, son of Hrothvitnir, chasing the bright bride of heaven. From the flesh of Ymir the earth was made, the oceans from his blood, the hills of bones, the forest of hares, and of his skull the sky. And from his eyebrows the gentle gods created Midgard for man. And from his brains the menacing clouds they created. Favored by Ullr and all the gods who first reached into the flames. For the house can be seen by the sons of gods. It kettles were cast aside. Sons of Ivald in ancient times created Skidbaldnir, the best of ships for bright Freyr, noble son of Njord. The ash of Yildrasil is the greatest tree, Skidbaldnir, best of ships, Odin of all gods, of horses Slepnir, by frost of bridges, Bragi of poets, Habrak of hawks, Garmer of hounds, having shown my face to sons of God, with that help is awakened, all Asir will come in aid, sitting on Aegir's bench, drinking at Aegir's. Grimnir is my name. I am Gangleri, Hirjan, and Halmje, Hjalmberi, Thek and Thredi, Thund and Ud, Helbindi and Har, Saf and Sivapal, and Sangatal, Heretit, and Hinyakar. Bilieg, Belieg, Bulwerk, Fjolnir, Grim and Grimir, Grabsvith, Hjolsvith, Sithhot, Sithskeg, Sigfather, Hnyakoth, Allfather, Valfather, Atred, Farmater. Just one name have I never had. Since first I traveled among men, I am Grimnir at Gerards, and Yalk at Asmander, and I was Yaller when sleigh riding, Thrower at the council, Vithyr when going into battle, Oski and Omi, Yafjor and Bilfindi, Gondolir and Harbard amongst gods. So I was Fithyr and Svidi, Svidir at Sokmirs, Mimirirs. And I tricked the ancient Jotun, son of Mithvitnir, the famous I slayed single-handed. You are drunk, Gerard, you drank too much. Much have you lost, you are no young longer, favored by the Ienar or Odin. I advised you a lot, but you knew better. And your false friends I can lie down, I see my friends, swords wet with blood, your slain body... Now Yig will have, I know you lived too long. The Desir are hostile, the servant sees Odin. Now come to me if you can. Now I am Odin, Yig once I was. Before that they called me Thund, Vak and Skiffing, 
Wolfred, and Hropata, Gaut and Yalk among the gods, Ofnir and Svafnir, I think, are all names for me. King Girad sat with his sword on his knee, half drawn from its sheath. When he understood it was indeed Odin, who was among them, he rose to get Odin away from the fires. The sword slipped from his hand. Falling with the hilt down, King Girad stumbled and fell forward. Falling on his own sword, he died. Then Odin disappeared, and Agnar ruled as king for a long time. So that's it. Um, again, please like, share, uh, make a comment, even if you do like just a little period, boop. That all helps the algorithms, and I appreciate it so much. So if you like this content, please just do a little algorithm thingy. I will appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Thank you for stopping by.